Chapter 6 And the Lord said to Moses, Suppose some of the people sin against the Lord by falsely telling their neighbor that an item entrusted to their safe keeping has been lost or stolen. Or suppose they have been dishonest with regard to a security deposit, or they have taken something by theft or extortion. Or suppose they find a lost item and lie about it, or they deny something while under oath, or they commit any other similar sin. If they have sinned in any of these ways and are guilty, they must give back whatever they have taken by theft or extortion, whether a security deposit, or property entrusted to them, or a lost object that they claimed as their own, or anything gained by swearing falsely. When they realize their guilt, they must restore the principal amount plus a penalty of 20% to the person they have harmed. They must then bring a guilt offering to the priest, who will present it before the Lord. This offering must be a ram with no physical defects or the animal's equivalent value in silver. The priest will then make atonement for them before the Lord, and they will be forgiven. Then the Lord said to Moses, Give Aaron and his sons the following instructions regarding the whole burnt offering. The burnt offering must be left on the altar until the next morning, and the altar fire must be kept burning all night. The next morning, after dressing in his special linen clothing and undergarments, the priest on duty must clean out the ashes of the burnt offering and put them beside the altar. Then he must change back into his normal clothing and carry the ashes outside the camp to a place that is ceremonially clean. Meanwhile, the fire on the altar must be kept burning. It must never go out. Each morning the priest will add fresh wood to the fire and arrange the daily whole burnt offering on it. He must then burn the fat of the peace offerings on top of this daily whole burnt offering. Remember, the fire must be kept burning on the altar at all times. It must never go out. These are the instructions regarding the grain offering. Aaron's sons must present this offering to the Lord in front of the altar. The priest on duty will take a handful of the choice flour that has been mixed with olive oil and sprinkled with incense. He will burn this token portion on the altar, and it will be very pleasing to the Lord. After burning this handful, the rest of the flour will belong to Aaron and his sons for their food. It must, however, be baked without yeast and eaten in a sacred place within the courtyard of the tabernacle. Remember, this flour may never be prepared with yeast. I have given it to the priests as their share of the offerings presented to me by fire. Like the sin offering and the guilt offering, it is most holy. Any of Aaron's male descendants from generation to generation may eat of the grain offering, because it is their regular share of the offerings given to the Lord by fire. Any one or anything that touches this food will become holy. And the Lord said to Moses, On the day Aaron and his sons are anointed, they must bring to the Lord a grain offering of two quarts of choice flour, half to be offered in the morning, and half to be offered in the evening. It must be cooked on a griddle with olive oil, and it must be well mixed and broken into pieces. You must present this grain offering, and it will be very pleasing to the Lord. As the sons of the priests replace their fathers, they will be inducted into office by offering this same sacrifice on the day they are anointed. It is the Lord's regular share, and it must be completely burned up. All such grain offerings of the priests must be entirely burned up. None of the flour may be eaten. Then the Lord said to Moses, Give Aaron and his sons these further instructions regarding the sin offering. The animal given as a sin offering is most holy and must be slaughtered in the Lord's presence at the place where the burnt offerings are slaughtered. The priest who offers the sacrifice may eat his portion in a sacred place within the courtyard of the tabernacle. Anything or anyone who touches the sacrificial meat will become holy, and if the sacrificial blood splatters anyone's clothing, it must be washed off in a sacred place. If a clay pot is used to boil the sacrificial meat, it must be broken. If a bronze kettle is used, it must be scoured and rinsed thoroughly with water. Only males from a priest's family may eat of this offering, for it is most holy. If, however, the blood of a sin offering has been taken into the tabernacle to make atonement in the holy place for the people's sins, none of that animal's meat may be eaten. It must be completely burned up.